Okay, so I'm going to do a quick lesson on contingency tables. A contingency table, um, you utilize it to classify nominal scale observations um, according to two characteristics. So um, it's a pretty simple table as far as uh, tables are concerned, probably one of the simpler if not the simplest one. Um, contingency tables are used to classify observations according to two identifiable characteristics. Um, and I'm going to show you how they work. You, there are some really good examples on page 117 of contingency tables. Here uh, you can see, for instance, uh, there are four nominal uh, variables um, or nominal uh, observations of uh, Kane, uh, Olean, and Sheffield, and Tionista. And the question is, is uh, the, of the cars that they sold, did they sell it above or below the, the median? Okay, and you can see here Tionista did the best with 26 cars that they sold above the median profit, 17 cars they sold below the median profit, um, and then you have uh, Sheffield did the worst with almost the exact opposite, 19 above and 26 below. So Sheffield sold 42% uh, above, while uh, Tionista sold 60% above uh, the median profit. So let's take a look at how we can do it with our data. Um, we've got uh, our our qualitative data right here and we can make um, the uh, the contingency table with qualitative data. Uh, you do not need uh, quantitative data. As a matter of fact, if you use quantitative data uh, in a contingency table, you should probably uh, put it into some sort of, uh, you know, grouping variable uh, or, or grouping class uh, into you know, like what they did here above and below. They took quantitative uh, data and made it into above and below. So here we are going to do insert uh, pivot table and we're going to make a pivot table um, based on the sex of an individual. Okay, so uh, we uh, put uh, a pivot table in the same table that we're working in. And so we've got uh, sex, female or male, let's put it right here into the columns. Um, and then let's see, based on sex, hmm, uh, why don't we go down to how satisfied are you with your uh, fall semester, hmm, how satisfied are you with your, um, with your uh, roommate, okay, and then we'll also put that into rows. Uh, and there's a count now of uh, rows. And uh, there is a way uh, to be able to sort these. Uh, you're supposed to be able to drag these, um, but for some odd reason it's just not working well. Uh, so I actually already took the liberty of doing it, and so I'm going to show you guys. Uh, so I ordered these from extremely satisfied all the way down to I choose not to answer, which I choose not to answer is not ordinal. It, it's, you know, just out of the order. So extremely satisfied to extremely dissatisfied. And you can see based on the contingency table um, of female or male, um, the uh, extremely satisfied uh, female um, is contingent or extremely satisfied is contingent on whether or not uh, it's female or male. Okay, so there's 27 people who, uh, uh, 27 females who noted that they were extremely satisfied with their current roommate, while 39 males um, noted that they were extremely satisfied with their uh, roommate. Now. Uh, what's uh, unique about this, just because it's 27 and 39, doesn't necessarily mean that more males than females uh, were extremely satisfied. Yes, numerically it, it means that, but what we really need to be looking at is a uh, percentage of males. Okay, so you see right here, 39, uh, but there's 67 males and there's only 40 females in my uh, on, in all three sections. So in order to get the uh, 
the percentage of males, we take 39 and we divide it by uh, 67, which gives us 58% of males uh, are extremely satisfied, while 68% of females. So proportionately, uh, more females than males, uh, or percentage-wise, uh, more females than males are extremely satisfied with their current roommate. Um, so, uh, that's just something that's really unique. Um, and then uh, I did the same with uh, all of these. And so what I did there is I did equals uh, 27 divided by 40. And unfortunately with pivot tables, you can't just drag it down because it'll just drag down the exact same formula every single time you've got to go in and do each one individually. So that's one pivot table. If we wanted to, we could do another pivot table. Let's see here. Let's delete these. Uh, remove field, remove field. Uh, we'll leave the sex in there. Um, and we'll go with what is your favorite genre of movies? Now we're dealing specifically with um, two nominal variables. Um, and you can do frequency, or sorry, uh, you can do contingency tables with nominal variables. Um, and so you look at uh, action, uh, 20 males. Um, comprise uh, the 23 total. So if you were to want to know uh, what percentage of males make up the total number, you do equals 20 divided by uh, the grand total, which gives you uh, 86%, well, 87%. Um, and then you do the same thing, equals males divided by the total. Um, and once again, you hit percent up there. So uh, males comprise 87% and 70% of adventure and action. However, uh, you go down to, let's say, um, romantic comedies equals uh, two, uh, 2 divided by 19. Uh, males only comprise 11% uh, of the romantic comedies, while fe females comprise equals 17 divided by 19, 89.5% um, uh, or 89% of uh, romantic comedy individuals who like romantic comedies are females. These variables and how females are distributed dependent on the value of the um, the 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 movie the genre uh, variable, so that's why it's called a contingent uh, contingency table because males uh, the distribution of the males is contingent on uh, the value of the um, uh, of the movie genre va uh, variable. And so that's contingency tables. If you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to um, feel free to post something on the discussion board and uh, I'll, or shoot me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.